Now I had to mix nice and put it all in a sausage stuffer. Something you don't see much over here, a piece of plastic. You found that by the uh, spice supply companies in Germany. And that is meant to keep the meat not so much in the, in the pot. I had it once in the German club. And if they take this, oh, he said, oh, the rest goes in the water. I'm German, I don't do that. So then I come to my sausage stuffer here. I have a five pounder. And I, as you know, I had five pounds. And that, that sausage stuffer actually came with those three tubes. I don't like the plastic tubes because the casings don't slide good on it. And you don't get enough on it. So I bought myself a metal one, a pla uh, stainless steel one. I barely ever use those. When I do more mounts, I have a bigger sausage stuffer. Now I got my casings out. I'm going to show you what I have. Those are sheep casings. I don't know what caliber they are. Hog casings, I think they're smaller hog casings. And those are beef round casings. I don't know what you call it, beef, beef rounds, I think. And I tie them off. I want to make only one of them. I'm going to show you how it goes. For that, the, the tube is much too small, but for one sausage, it isn't what. Uh. Now there's uh, the machine sliding back and forth. And we have something for that too. We take a rice grip and tie it on the table. That's it. Yeah. And now comes what most people don't know. If you think it's not tight enough, just hold it and turn it. Until it's nice and tight, or the way you want it. In this case, I want to use a twine and tie it down. Normally, you take the one mount in the end, one end in the mount, and the other one you make a tie. But I learned a long time ago to do it like this. Now I want to take some hog casings. So now I took a piece of hog casings and put them on. But I'm not much, but as you see, they put it in too. That didn't take a whole length. You got them in one hog case, you get probably 20 pounds in. Since I want to make a little bit of everything, I just make a few. I think that's enough. Ah, I should have used it. Then you put a nut in it. Or you can try and tie it off. And then you make some small sausages. I like them always that small. So you can eat it without eating too much in one time. And then something came out, guess where that goes? In my mouth. And now I work with cheap casings. That's the only casing where the, the filling tube is good for. I should have put a bigger one on, but I didn't want to fool around with it. And if it doesn't slide good, and uh, on very good, all you do let the sausage come out a little bit in front. And then you can slide it down good.
and now come the next case it's sausage. Yeah, that's uh, for me breakfast sausage spices or hot dog spices. I will make hot dogs tomorrow and that's all I have right now. That's what I will use for hot dogs. A lot of guys see, a lot of times you see people do it with two guys. I always do it alone. I don't have to have somebody turning my cank on a sausage stuffer. We never did it in Germany either. We did it always like this. Sometimes we had some by hand and some had electric, but no matter what, that's the way we did it. Before I finish here, I want to show how I uh, divide the, or how to make the sausage. Just go where you think, how long you want it, turn it once in it, until it's nice and tight. Uh, make some little ones. There we go. Now as you see the sausage looks pretty fatty I think. But it isn't. As you saw how the meat looked like. What it is that's all pork meat and the pork meat has a lighter color. That's why they look so light. Now I have my five pound of sausage in the casing. And this is the leftover what was in the sausage stuffer. What the hell you do with that? What I do, I put it in a frying pan and fry it, or take a sandwich and put the meat on there, or just eat it like this. That's what most likely will happen. I love that stuff. And those I will hang on a stick and hang on the ceiling. And you will see tomorrow what happened with it. Maybe I should show you how I put it on the sticks too. I just put a stick through it. And then I lay it on something at the other end and put them apart. And you know, as you see, I always pull them apart like this. Normally I can, from the tin ones, I probably can get 18 pair on it. I don't know how much I got here. And then they hang it on the ceiling, up, and they're like this, and then they hang it on the ceiling. Now as you see behind me, I hung them on the ceiling. That means I have stuff prepared that I can put sticks on there. I make sausage down here for probably 45, 48 years. So everything is the way I think is best way for me. Now I had my sheet version hanging on the ceiling overnight. And now they're nice and red. That's what you're looking for. And to me, you can eat them like that already, but now you smoke them. But since they're dry, dried out and fermented, or red from the inside out, they don't need much smoke anymore. They will take the, the smoke pretty fast. Now, if you can see, it's true and true red. And they taste good just like that also. I eat this one already. Now, the next morning, I had my chicken version in a smokehouse overnight. It's just a light smoke. I take the smoke very easy, very fast, because it was very dry before I put it in. That means they were fermented before you smoke it. Otherwise, they will have an ugly smoke flavor. Now I want to talk one more time short about uh, fermenting or make it red from the inside out, I call it. 
You can do it if the sun is out, you can hang it in the sun. Some do it in Germany, but then you worry about the flies all the time. Then you can put it anywhere where it's a little warmer. Where I learned the sausage, we put it in the smokehouse and put smoke underneath right away, but warm smoke. We put it on, put a hill on the sawdust on the bottom, next morning you were done. But I tried it in different areas and it didn't work. Different butchers, they have different smokehouses and it didn't work that good. So that's when I learned how to put it like in, in a sausage kitchen, you hang it on the ceiling, it's always warm, or at night they're pitch red. They're very good. So that's why I learned to do the same thing with the raw ham. Otherwise they hang forever in the smokehouse and it'll get color and it don't taste that good. So this is my sausage, that's what I like. Now I want to show the sauce, I cut it open, it looks nice, it's soft on the inside, it's supposed to be soft. Now what you do with it? Number one, I eat it raw like it is. I love it. But you also can heat it up in any uh, pea soup or whatever you want to put smoked meat in it, you can put it on. Or you put it on the grill. And when you put it on the grill, it tastes the best short after the smoke. <coughs> or you let it hang outside and dry it. The tin ones are dry pretty fast, the little heavier ones they take a little longer, but they are very dry. And I don't think we'll have a problem with getting hollow because they're not big enough for that. Now I want to explain one more time very short what I did. I have the first, the little ones are in sheep casings and they put it tin ones. They're nice, they dry fast, you can eat it pretty nicely if you want to dry it. Then the next ones are the hog casings. I uh, like to use that on the grill or in soup or so. And there is a uh, one of the beef middle, a little heavier, that is meant as a bread spread. I love it, take a fresh roll and put this on there, that's a breakfast and half. Now I come to the end of my movie, if you like him, share and subscribe. You have a good day.